We begin today the Gemara on the bottom of Daftes, four lines from the bottom. We were learning about the Allah of Netiya, which is the Allah of Arla. And it said in the Mishnah that for Arla, Rosh Hashanah, Tishrei, is the new Rosh Hashanah for a new sapling that you planted. Meaning if you planted it a month before Rosh Hashanah, for example, so when it comes to Rosh Hashanah, that counts for one year. And then you only have to wait another two years. Even though usually our law, you have to wait three years, but here you're going to end up waiting two years and one month. So here the Gemara is actually going to bring that it's not so simple. It's not two years and one month. It's going to be a little bit more than that. And brings a Braise that discusses this. The Braise brings in the Indian of Shemitah as well. They both have similar halachas. Let's see. Tone Rabbanon, we learned in the Braise. Echad aniteya, whether someone is planting a tree. Vechad mavrich, or someone is being mavrich, which means that you bend down a branch from a tree and you put it into the ground. And then if you leave it there in the ground, it takes root for itself and it grows a new tree and then you snip it off from the original tree. That's mavrich. Chassidus always brings this union of mavrich. This is the source that why bracha means hamshacha, to draw down. Like over here when you pull down the branch and put it into the ground. Vechad or someone that's grafting. That's when you take one branch of a tree and you make a hole in another tree and you put it inside and then it starts growing over there from the fruits of the new tree, start growing on this old tree. So Erev Shviyas, this, if this was done on Erev Shmiteh, Shloishim Yayim Lefnei Rosh Hashanah. So if this was done 30 days before Rosh Hashanah, so then there's two halachas here. One is regarding Arla and one is regarding Shmiteh. So the halacha regarding Arla is also Loishana. It, that 30 days is considered to be already one year. And when it's Rosh Hashanah, it begins another year. So this, this detail of also Lashana that it says here is in, in any year, not necessarily a Shemitah year, even though it started say, saying about Shemitah. But this is the Halacha of Arla. Anytime, and any, whether it's Shemitah, whether not, 30 days before Rosh Hashanah, that counts for a full year and then starts another year. Now, if it's out of Shemitah, so then Umutter Lekaimon Bishviyas. You're allowed to keep this in the Shemitah year. In other words, as we learned before, there's something called Teis with Shemitah. That too close to Shemitah, within 30 days of Shemitah, you're not allowed to plant already because you're planting for the purpose of using it in Shemitah itself. But if it's 30 days before, so then you're allowed to keep it. But if it's Pachas Mishlai Shem Yaim, if it's less than 30 days before Shemitah, or in any year, less than 30 days before Rosh Hashanah, Lefnei Rosh Hashanah, so also Lei Shana, for our law, less than 30 days, it will not count as a year. And for us, and then you're not, on a, you're not going to be allowed to keep this for Shemitah because within 30 days is the time of the Teisvis Shemitah that you can't plant because it's for the purpose of Shemitah and therefore you're going to have to uproot it or you can't have any anah from it. It's, it's uh, part of Shemitah already. Okay, so there are two details in this Braisa that the Gemara eventually will discuss. We're not finished with the Braise, there's a continuation here, but in this section of the Braise, the Gemara will discuss two details. Number one, the Gemara will discuss, what's up is 30 days? Why not one day? Don't we know that one day of a year, we have before in the Gemara a few times, one day of a year could be considered like a full year. Here it's saying 30 days. That's one point the Gemara will discuss. Another point the Gemara will discuss is, when you, when you talk about planting or grafting, it doesn't take root in the ground immediately. When you plant something, it takes uh, some time until it takes root and it starts uh, growing, right? So therefore the Gemara will later explain that Lukula Alma, the issue of, <coughs> of uh, planting before Shemitah or this Indian of Arla that it's, it's 30 days before, only when it takes root in the ground does it matter. The fact that you placed it into the ground, until it doesn't take root, it's like still seeds that are sitting on the table in your house. It's nothing. It's pointless. And only when it takes root, which is called klita, that's when it's considered to be, oh, that you planted it. So that's another thing the Gemara is going to discuss over here. When it says 30 days, what exactly do we mean 30 days? Do we mean 30 days from when you physically planted it? But it didn't take you root yet. It takes a while to, to, to take root. And the Gemara will actually discuss exactly how long does it take until it takes root. So those are the two subjects that are coming soon in the Gemara on this section of the Braise. But there's a second half of the Braise and the Gemara will discuss that first. the Braise weiter, u peirais neti The peirais of this sapling that you planted. So according to Rashi, when it says peirais neti it refers to this tree that you planted 30 days before Rosh Hashanah. And therefore, you counted 30 days as a full year. 
and then you just have to wait another two years, Rosh Hashanah, for it to be right to eat, right? That's what you would think. A month and another two years. But the, the Brayse says, no, you have to wait a little more. Asurin at Tezvav Bishvat. It's not going to be enough to wait until that after that month, another two years Rosh Hashanah. After you come to another two years Rosh Hashanah, you have to continue waiting until Tezvav Bishvat, which is Rosh Hashanah Lilonais. And the Brayse explains, Imlo Arla Arla. If it's the third year, so it's still going to be Arla until Tezvav Bishvat. Vim Revai Revai. If it's the fourth year, so it's not Arla anymore, but the, the fourth year, the Allah of Revai is that you have to take the fruits up to Yerushalayim, or you redeem it and bring the money to Yerushalayim and eat it over there. So basically, what the Braise here is saying is, as Rashi explains, that even though we said that the first month counts as a full year, so you would think by the time you come to the second Rosh Hashanah that you have already three years. But nevertheless, the Braise is telling you no. Because Rosh Hashanah Le'ilonois, is by Hamishasa Bishvat. So in the beginning it was a Natiya, it was a sapling. And over here the halacha of Arla applied. And for the halacha of Arla, Rosh Hashanah is Rosh Hashanah Leilonis. In other words, the, 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 for the Natiya that is. The Rosh Hashanah of Tishrei. Rosh Hashanah for Tishrei is Rosh Hashanah for the Natiya, for the Arla. But once it comes to the third year, now it's a tree. And for trees, the Rosh Hashanah is the Rosh Hashanah Leilonis, which is Tezvav Bishvat. So therefore, you have to wait until the Rosh Hashanah Li'ilona is Tezvav B'Shvat to be allowed to eat it. That's what Rashi says over here. So according to Rashi, when it says in the Gemara, Peres Neti Yizu, it's referring to these Peres that you planted 30 days before Rosh Hashanah. So the Ritva says, because in the beginning we were Mekel, and we gave you a full year just out of one month, so when it comes to the end, we're more Machmer. Well, Machmed, that you have to wait an extra time until you come to the Rosh Hashanah Li'ilonis. And why Dafke to Chamish Asa B'Shvat? Because that's the Rosh Hashanah Li'ilonis. Now it's a tree, so therefore you have to wait until Chamish Asa B'Shvat. But there are many Rishayim that disagree with this. Teisvis uh, disagrees with this and says, when it says, Peris Neti Yizu, this is not only in a case where you planted it 30 days before Rosh Hashanah, even in a case where you planted it less than 30 days before Rosh Hashanah, and you basically have to wait three full years, but nevertheless, when it comes to the end, you always have to wait until Hamisha Bishvat. Once it's already three years, and now it it's, it's, has a status of a tree, so then it falls into the category of trees, and the Rosh Hashanah for trees is by Hamisha Bishvat. In the beginning, when it's a Natiya, when you plant it, so the, the Mishnah said that the Rosh Hashanah for this Natiya is Rosh Hashanah, Tishrei, which means if there would be 30 days, so then those 30 days would be counted as a year, and then you would only have to wait until two years later, until Hamisha Sabishvat. But if it, was, if it was less than that, if it was less than 30 days, so then you're going to end up actually waiting for your Arla more than three years. It's going to be basically full three years, and plus another few months until Hamisha Sabishvat. That's Taisus' Pshat in the Gemara. But the point that it comes out over here is that even after you completed the three years, you still have to continue waiting until Hamisha Sabishvat, like every tree where the Rosh Hashanah is to Hamisha Sabishvat. So the Gemara now brings the source in the Psukim for this. From where do I know this? Motu Mishmeid, Rabbi Yanai, and others said, No, Rabbi Yanai is the one that said this. When the Torah speaks about the Isra of Arla, the Torah says, U Bashana Haraviyas, U Bashana Hamishis. So the main diak over here is the Vav. Why does it say, U Bashana Haraviyas, and then it says again, U Bashana Hamishis. It could have just said, Bashana Haraviyas and Bashana Hamishis. So what's the Vav? Pa'amim, sometimes, Shabiraviyas, that it's in the fourth year, Vadayan Asturim Mishum Arla, even though you entered into the fourth year, but it's still also for Arla. In the case that we just mentioned, when you planted it before Rosh Hashanah, and when Rosh Hashanah came, three years are up already, but nevertheless, you have to continue waiting until the Rosh Hashanah Li'ilana is Chamisha Sabishvat, so you're already in the fourth year and you're still waiting. Upa'amim, and sometimes, Shebechamishis, Vadayna Surah Mishum Revai. And if it's the fourth year, so sometimes you have to end up waiting even into the fifth year, and it's still going to be considered Revai. That's why the Torah says, U Bashana Revius, to connect the fourth year to what it said before, to the Isra of Arla. And the same thing, Bashana Hamishis, that sometimes in the fifth year you still have the status of Revai of the previous year. So this explains the end of the Braisa. 
Now the Gemara goes back to the beginning of the Braisa. So the first thing the Gemara is going to discuss is, what's this thing of 30 days? Why Dafke 30 days before is counted as a full year, not even one day? Lame, shall we say, the Loi Kerab Meir, that that Braisa is not like Rab Meir, the Rab Meir. Ha'omar Rab Meir said, Yoim Echad B'Shona. Even just one day of a year, Choshev Shona. It's counted like a full year, so you don't have to wait 30 days. The Tanya, so we learned in the Braisa where Rab Meir says this, Par Ha'omo Betayre. When the Taita says regarding a par, a bull that's brought as a carbon, what's the age of a bull? Three years old. So, the, so what's, what's considered to be three years old? So Rab Meir says, Par Oma B'tayra Stam, when it says in the Torah, Par Ben Esrim Varba Chaydish, that's 24 months, V'yoy Mechot, and one more day. Because one day is like a full year. So therefore that's considered to be three years. Divrei Rab Meir. Rab Allah Zayme Ben Esrim Varba Chaydish, V'lamed Yoy. It has to be 24 months and a whole other month. Only a month is considered to be like a full year, not one day. Shoy Rab Meir Aymer. Rab Meir said regarding the Karbanas as follows. When the Torah uses the expression of an eagle, a calf, how old is that? Stam, stam the word eagle in the Torah is ben shana, one year old. When it says in the Torah ben bakar, it says in the Torah eagle ben bakar, when it adds the words ben bakar, what does that mean? Ben shtayim, that means a, a calf that's two years old. And when it says par, ben shalosh. And when the Torah writes par, it means three years old. And what's three years old? Two years and one day. Even one day is considered to be like a full year. So why don't we say the same thing over here regarding Shemitah and regarding Arla, that just one day before Rosh Hashanah is considered to be like a full year. And for the Gemara, this Braisa before could go even according to Rab Meir. When does Rab Meir say that one day is like a full year? When you're at the end, at the end of the year. Now you have two years and then at the end, after the two years, there's one more day that adds up as a third year. But over here we're speaking about in the beginning, when you're starting the three years of our law, the first year of the three years of our law, or the beginning before Shemitah, Loyoma. Then he doesn't say that the beginning of one day could be counted like a full year. Why not? Sort of asks on this answer. But isn't it a kavachaymeh? Uma nido. Now let's look at what the Allah is by a nido. Do we count one day as a full day or, or part of a day as a full day? Let's see. By a nido, the Allah is she'ain tchilas hayoyim oyle lo b'soifa. By a nido, minat teira. The Allah of a nido is that when it comes to the end of the seven days, so she has to wait to go to the mikveh until the end of the day. She can't go to the mikveh <coughs> in the beginning of the day because of mikta sayyim kekuloi. She has to wait until at night. So at the end, ain't chola sayyim ayla la b'soifa. The beginning of the day, there's not, she uh, ain't, again, uman nida she ain't chola sayyim ayla la b'soifa. At the end of the seven days, the beginning of the day does not count as a full day. So soifa yoim ayla la b'tchilosa. But nevertheless, in the reverse, at the beginning of the seven days, if she sees blood at the end of the day, as long as it's before Shkia, that day counts as one of the seven days. Shiyayim echad oilala. Ah? So, bitchilasa. Ah, wait, 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 one second. Well, again, let me read it again, sorry. Uma nido, she'ain tchilasa yayim oilala b'soifa. Baya nido, at the end, the beginning of the day does not count as a full day. Soifa yayim oilala bitchilasa, but nevertheless, at the beginning of her being a nido. So the end of the day counts as a full day. So if so, now we have a kavachaymer. Shana, when it comes to a year, sheyoyim echad aydolo b'soifa. You just said that when it comes to a carbon, that at the end of the, of the two years and the third year, that over there it counts like a full year. One day does count like a full year. So ain't it So for sure I should say that in the beginning you count one day of the full year like a full year. So, right, so that's a Kavah Haimer. If by a nida, by the end, you don't count part of the day like a full day, but nevertheless at the beginning, I do count part of the day like a full day. So when it comes to a year, and I see that at the end, I count one day as a full year, so for sure at the beginning, I should count one day as a full year. There's a long Rashi here, just to point to the point of what Rashi says. This thing that it says here regarding a nida, that in the beginning you count part of the day as a full day, today we don't do it that way. Today, there has to be Shiv and Akiyim, seven full clean days, where even the first day has to be a full clean day. 
by a nido, the first day, does not have to be a full day. Even if she saw blood, mamish a minute before shkia, that's already counted as one day. But by a zava, the halacha is that it has to be seven full days. And today, we treat every nido like a zava, and therefore we can't shiv in the But the Gemara is talking about the halacha min Okay, Akopanim, the Gemara rejected the, the point that it said before, that you can make a difference between one day in the beginning, or one day at the end. There's no difference. Adarab, it's a kava chaymer. If you're counting one day as a full year at the end, for sure you should count one day as a, as a full year in the beginning. So we're back to our question when it said before 30 days, that only 30 days is counted as a full year. That seems to be not like Rav Meir. It seems to be like Rabbi Lazar. Rabbi Lazar is the one that said that 30, day, 30 days is like a full year. So the Gemara, Ve'ela so now what are you going to say, Rabbi Lazar? that the Braise before saying that you need 30 days, that goes according to Rabbi Lozar. So the Gemara has a question on that, and here it comes to the second point that I said at the beginning, that when you plant something, it's not just the action of planting, it has to take root in the ground. How long does it take to take root in the ground? So the Gemara, V'elamai Rabbi Lozar, Shloishim u'shloishim boi. If so, it shouldn't be 30 days, it should be 30 and 30 days. And the reason for this is, as the Gemara is now going to explain, because there's the 30 days of Taisvis Shemitah before, but then there's the 30 days that it takes for the, to, for the Klita, for it to take root into the ground. So therefore, at, in total, it should be 60 <coughs> days before, not 30 days before. And the Gemara brings the source for this. The Tanan, we learned in the Mishnah. Ein noitim, ve'en mavrichim, ve'en ve'en markivim, you're not allowed to plant, you're not allowed to bend down into the, the branch into the ground, or grafting, out of Shmita before Shmita, pachas melamed yayim. It shouldn't be less than 30 days, lufnei Rosh Hashanah, before the Rosh Hashanah of Shmita. Vim nata, ve'hivrich, ve'hikiv, if you did plant or graft in the, in, within 30 days before Rosh Hashanah, yaker. You have to uproot it because you, it, it, this is something that you planted in Shmita. We're not going to say this, Rabbi Yezah, this is the Tanakhama's opinion. Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yehuda says it doesn't take 30 days for it to take root. Anytime you're grafting and it did not take root within three days, that means it's not going to take root anymore. So he says it actually takes root in three days. Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Shimon, Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Shimon say it takes two weeks for it to take root. So obviously this is not a machlekes about a fact and how long it takes to take root. There's various different degrees to what extent it takes root. 30 days is when it takes root deeper, and then either two weeks, which is a little less, but it also is considered to be taking root. And uh, according to Rabbi Yaisi, or according to um, Rabbi Yehuda, that is, according to Rabbi Yehuda, just two days. Two days is when it begins the initial taking root in the ground. So now the Gemara explains what their opinions are over here regarding Shemitah. So Rav Nachman says in the name of Rabbi Baravue, the one that says that it takes 30 days to take root in the ground. So then, so you need 30 days and another 30 days. If you're going to plant within 30 days before 30 days of Shemitah, so then it's going to take root within that 30 days, which is already the taste of Shmita. So therefore you can't plant 60 days before Shmita in order for it not to take root within the 30 days of before Shmita. So it's going to be a total of 60 days. The one that says three days it takes to take root, Rabbi Yehuda, so then you're not allowed to plant 33 days before Shmita. It shouldn't take root within 30 days. And the one that says that it takes two weeks to take root in the ground. So then you have to stop planting before Shmita two weeks and 30 days before Shmita. So what's the Gemara's question? The Braise before that said that you're not allowed to plant before Shmita within 30 days. You can't say that that goes according to Rabbi Lazar that says 30 days counts like a full year. Because according to Rabbi Lazar, you should have to wait 60 days, not 30 days. 30 days plus another 30 days for it to take root, 60 days. And also, if that price in the beginning holds like Rabbi Yehuda, so it should be 33 days, for 3 days for it to take root. So why is the Braise before saying only 30 days? Why is the Braise before ignoring the fact that you need 30 days for it to take root? Not just the uh, 30 days when you've planted it. So we go back to what we said before. Really, that price before is going according to Rab Meir. When he said over there, the 30 days, 
What he was saying 30 days was because in the 30 days before Shemitah, it takes just one day for it, according to Rab Meir, what he was saying was that even one day of the year is counted like a full year. So really, in essence, you're not allowed to plant even just one day before Rosh Hashanah. So I, why 30 days? 30 days for the klita, for it to take root. That's why he said 30 days. But the Gemara says, but Ihachi, if so, Lamed Alev Boy. So it should be 31 days, 30 days for it to take root, and then one day that it should be one day that it already took root before Shemitah. So why 30 days? And for the Gemara, Kosova, Rav Meir holds that Yom Lamed, the 30th day, Oyle Lekan Ulekan. The 30th day is going to be for the. Uh, 30 days that it takes to take root, and also for that one day before Shemitah. In other words, when it comes to the 30th day, in the beginning of the 30th day, it took root already, and then you have the rest of the day, Mitzvah Sayyim Kekuloi. According to Rab Meir, not only one day is counted like a full year, but even part of a day is counted like a full day. So therefore, that 30th day is the 30 days before Shemitah that it took to take root, and then the last day will be counted as a full year, because you have part of the day already that it took root before. That's uh, the pshat according to Rab Meir. So the end of the conclusion of the Gemara is that the Braise before does go according to Rab Meir that says that one day counts like a full year. And the only reason it says 30 days is because it takes 30 days for it to take root in the ground. Now the Gemara brings the source of their machlekes. Om Rab Yechenen, Rab Yechenen says, Shnei mikra echad darshu. This shaila, this machlekes of Rab Meir and Rab Lazar, where the one day is counted like a full year or whether 30 days is counted like a full year, the source of both opinions comes from the same Pasik, and this is a Pasik by the Mabel. Fayihi ba'achas v'sheish me'iz shona. And it was uh, one year and 600 years. This is the, the, in the, the years of the age of Noyach. The Mabel began when Noyach was 600 years old. And here this Pasik is speaking about the end of the Mabel. So when Noyach was 601 years old, Barishain, in the first uh, month of the year, which is Tishrei, Be'echad l'chaydesh, on the first day of the chaydesh, so the Pasuk there continues to say, that's when the land dried up, and that's when Noyach opened up the teva, and they went out of the teva. That's the Pasuk. So what does this Pasuk mean? Rab Meir Rab Meir says, Midakati yoim echadu da'ayol b'shana. It's only the first day of the month, the first day of Tishrei, that they entered into the new year. V'kakari le'shana. And the Pasuk refers to it as a full year. It says, Ba'achas v'sheish me'ez shana that it's the 601st year, even though it's only one day into the new year. Shema mina, from here I see, yoim echad b'shana, chashav shana. One day of a year is considered to be a full year. It's already the 601st year, and it's counted like a full year, like it's full 601 years, even though it's only the, the beginning of the year, one day in the year. Fe'idach, the other opinion, Rabbi Loza, uh, this, this was uh, Rabbi Meir, right? So Rabbi Loza disagrees, and he says, no, this is not, this is not how you read the Pasuk. If the Pasuk would say 601 years of the life of Noyach, so then then you would rewrite that that Va'achas, that even just one day is considered to be like a full year. But ha should Now the order in the Pasuk is the reverse. It says Ba'achas, and then it says V'sheish Meis Shana, 600 years. So this is how you read the Pasuk. Shana, that word Shana that it says, Asheish Meis Koi. It's only going on the 600 years of the, of the age of Noyach, that he was 600 years old. Well, my Achas, and when it says before Achas, all it means is Aschalted Achas. It's just saying, and there was the beginning of one more year of the life of Noyach. But it doesn't mean that, it was, that we consider it like a full 601 years, because it says Achas before. So the word Shana does not go on Achas. That's how you read it according to Rabbi Loza. Now, for Rabbi Lazar, my time, um, according to Rabbi Lazar, Rabbi Yechenen before said that the source of Rabbi Lazar's opinion that only 30 days is counted as a full year is also from this Pasik. Where's his source in this Pasik <coughs> that 30 days is counted like a full year? The Chsev, because the Pasik says, Barishain, that this was the first month, in other words, Tishrei, Be'echad Lachaydish, in the first day of the month. So, according to the, the Ritva, Rashi doesn't explain this, but according to the Ritva, the Diak over here is, the Pasuk could have said, Barishain Ba'echad. And I would understand that that means the first month of the year, which is Tishrei, and Ba'echad, the first day of the month. Why does it have to say, La Chaydesh? That word is extra. 
So from that we learn out, Midakati Yoy Mechadu. It's just the first day of the month. The Ayol B'chaydish, the first day that you entered into the new month. The Kakari Le'chaydish, and the, the Torah adds the word La Chaydish. La Chaydish means that it's like the full month passed. So Shmami no, from here I learn out, Yoy Mechad B'chaydish, Choshev Chaydish. One day of a month could count like a full month. And on the Yoy Mechad B'chaydish, Choshev Chaydish, just like one day of a month counts like a full month, so Lamed Yoy Bashana, so similar I say that 30 days of a year, Chashuv and Shana are counted like a year. And the reason is, Chaydish Lemenuyov, just like when it comes to the month, I go with the days that make up the month. You count 30 days and you get a month, so therefore one day is counted like the full month. And Vishana Lemenuyov, and when it comes to a year which is made up of 12 months, so I go with the 30 days, and 30 days of a year of one month makes up like a full year. So this is the source of Rabbi Laza, that 30 days makes up a full year. From here the Gemara is going to go into the Mabal and all kinds of things, a very interesting Gemara. As we'll see him at the